So folks, Donald Trump just got tricked and trapped by Jack Smith, who pulled off a gargantuan and brilliant maneuver earlier this morning, really moments ago by the time you're watching this, because what he did was not only strengthen his case against Trump, but also ratchet up Trump's paranoia and meltdown mode, which will only help Jack as Donald Trump continues to incriminate himself. Hit the like and subscribe button as we track this again brilliant day just brilliant, brilliant series of tactics by Jack, because what he's done is a few things. We have some experts to really break it down, is that one, he has shown some of his cards, not nearly all of them, but shown just enough of his cards to ratchet up the fear of Donald Trump. Donald Trump was probably expecting some kind of move by the DOJ, and he has been for weeks, if not months or longer. But the types of charges that Jack are pursuing were ones that Donald Trump was not expecting. The, the level of charges and the severity of them, the amount of them, and therefore the amount of penalties they include is much larger than Trump and his legal team were expecting, according to reports. Much like with previous examples, they maybe expected something, but not this serious. It's like they didn't read when the um, arraignment or the... the uh, the affidavits came out and all of those things came out about the, the indictment, the indictment reports. They were far more detailed and serious than Trump's team were expecting. They were blindsided. And critically here, you also see a move against Trump co-conspirators in a way that not only puts those people in trouble, but gives Trump greater fear in his mind that people will flip on him if they're also being charged. Watch this. It's brilliant. And we'll break it down after. Uh, and Neil Katyal, what do you make uh, of that two weeks reference uh, by Tim uh, Parlatore, who is Bernie Carrick's criminal defense lawyer? It's relevant to the Jack Smith's January 6th investigation. Well, so first of all, I think, Lawrence, it's really quite a sad moment for the country that we're on indictment watch for a former president of the United States. And honestly, it feels like just another Monday. I mean, we keep on doing this over and over again, and it speaks to the widespread nature of Trump's criminal behavior. And whether it's tomorrow or Thursday, as Andrew Weissman says, or possibly in two weeks, uh, I think all indications are Donald Trump is going to get indicted. Jack Smith sent a target letter to Donald Trump last Sunday. You don't do that, particularly against a former president, unless you're pretty sure that you've got the goods. And with respect to Parlatore's two-week comment, I, I don't put much faith in that. Um, I think that Smith already has the goods, and so I suspect that we're going to see something a lot closer than two weeks. Um, and you know, this is not you know rocket science. I mean, a federal judge, Judge David Carter, very respected judge in California, has already said, based on what the January sixth evidence that Tim's committee uncovered that it's more likely than not that Donald Trump committed very serious federal felonies here. Uh, Tim Heafy, is it possible that uh, given the timing of the target letter that Jack Smith could uh, be delivering indictments of Donald Trump within the next few days or a week or so, but that the possible discussion of uh, Bernie Carrick's material two weeks from now could be part of an, an additional additional elements of that January 6th investigation with additional defendants being named down the road. Yes, Lawrence, exactly. The Department of Justice rules provide that you can't use a grand jury to investigate strictly an ex a case that's already been indicted. You can use the grand jury to investigate potentially superseding charges, additional defendants, additional counts beyond an indictment that has been returned. I think we've actually seen that from the special counsel in the Mar-a-Lago matter, right? Issued an indictment, yet has since then called additional witnesses before that grand jury in Florida. So I don't know that the Carrick developments and the two weeks to review the materials that... It, it, with all those caveats, if Trump is charged with conspiracy, there's no guarantee that his conspiracy his conspirators, people he conspired with, would be charged under the same indictment or indeed charged at all, right? 
That's exactly right. One can be an unindicted co-conspirator. In fact, if you think back to Michael Cohn's charges in the Southern District of New York, Cohn, of course, Mr. Trump's former personal lawyer, in that indictment, we learned about an unindicted co-conspirator. Individual one is how the government described that person in the indictment, and that turned out to be Mr. Trump himself. You know, charging a case as a conspiracy confers on the government certain evidentiary advantages. I'm not going to bore you with those now. So it makes sense often to charge a conspiracy. And often when you charge a conspiracy, you have multiple defendants at trial. But to your point, Rachel, you're exactly right. You don't have to. You can have unindicted co-conspirators um, that are flagged by the grand jury and mentioned in the indictment, but not sitting next to the defendant, perhaps Mr. Trump, at his own criminal trial. Chuck, I have to ask you, I can't let you go without asking you one last question, which is the question on everybody's mind in the news business this week, uh, which is um, what our expectations should reasonably, reasonably be about the relationship between that reported target letter and any indictment and any unsealing of an indictment against Trump if one yeah. is in fact coming. Yeah, uh, another great question. Well, when I was a federal prosecutor, I would occasionally send out target letters. Um, I would never send out a target letter to somebody that I did not intend to inv indict. They're not bluffs. They're not games. They're not make-believe. So here's what you ought to expect. If Mr. Trump really did receive a target letter, then he will be charged with federal crimes. If he really received a target letter, that will happen relatively soon. Now, to your points earlier, your caveats are wise. Target letters are not contracts, and the government could change its mind. But in my experience, that would be unusual. What you should expect is a federal indictment of Mr. Trump and a federal indictment soon. It's getting hotter here in the nation's capital. And no, I am not talking about the extreme heat wave affecting millions of people across this country. I'm talking about the heat affecting one person in particular, the twice impeached, twice indicted former president. That is because at any moment, special counsel Jack Smith could hand Donald Trump his third indictment, this time over his efforts to try to overturn his 2020 election loss. And just as a reminder, Donald, you did lose. And it appears like the heat is getting to Trump as he spent the weekend more focused on rage posting on his Twitter, or should I say X knockoff platform, continuing his attacks on the special counsel, Attorney General Merrick Garland, and the entire DOJ, hurling insults and whining about non-existent election interference. And join me now, Harry Littman, former U.S. attorney and former deputy assistant attorney general, and Miles Taylor, former chief of staff at the Department of Homeland Security in the Trump administration. His new podcast is called The Whistleblowers Inside the Trump Administration. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Harry, I want to start with you. What should we be looking for as signals to whether, if, if we assume an indictment is coming, whether it's imminent? Uh, it's a great question. I think really there's one main signal, and that is everything they're talking about in terms of witnesses they have to interview, they don't need the grand jury for. But it is customary, and in this case it will happen, that Trump's lawyers will be afforded a final chance to come in and uh, get, make a last-minute plea, uh, which will not succeed, but but they have the opportunity. I'm not. I don't see why they wouldn't take it. And it's interesting, uh, as you've just noted, that the sort of hysteria levels from Trump are hitting the stratosphere. Because this is one thing he would know about: Are we going in? Uh, are we? Uh, how is this going to work? What is the timing? So, to me, the table is set. Smith is ready to go, and that's what the target letter means, save only you guys coming in or not. And by the way, you can't take two weeks. You, you know, come, right. come in, have the pitch. After that, here's the indictment. How often does this pitch ever re, re, you know, result in a non-indictment when you come in for that last meeting? How likely is that? Well, you know, I was U.S. attorney and had those. Occasionally, it would change the charges, perhaps. Not here, only because it's been so carefully thought through. There's a draft indictment that you can be sure has gone up to the front office. So it's not as if DOJ always turns a deaf ear to these things. There, It might be useful. Here, I think we can be certain that no changes will occur as a result of the meeting, though. Uh, Miles, it, it, there is a certain level of hysteria <laughs> going on um, uh, amongst Donald Trump's uh, Twitter fingers or whatever he calls his platform, Truth Social. Um, 
You know the guy. I don't know him. Uh, how afraid do you think he is? I think he's terrified. I mean, I, I think that Donald Trump is not worried about this affecting, you know, in general, uh, his overall standing with the MAGA movement. I think what he's worried about, and, and even jail time, I think really what he's worried about is this is going to give even more ammunition to even more of his political rivals in the primary process. We've already seen Chris Christie and Will Hurd and Asa Hutchinson, you know, seize on his indictments to say, look, the guy may not even be able to take office as president of the United States, he's worried that this is going to make it even more difficult for him. But bigger picture, the concern that I have right now, Joy, though, is as much as Donald Trump is sweating it, and I like to watch him sweating it on TV, <laughs> we also know what this man does when he gets pushed into a corner, uh, and that is yeah. he incites violence. The man has a history of violence. And remember, you know, in the lead up to January 6, many months before the year before, he started to talk about coups being afoot and a civil war was in the offing. And we're seeing these menacing videos. And trust me, it's not by accident. Donald Trump's trying to assess if he does have supporters out there willing to commit acts of violence on his behalf. And that's what worries me every time one of these things happens is that we might see it. Now, I don't think with an indictment you're going to see him exhort people to violence because Donald Donald Trump will always hope in the end he can be the winner and not the loser. But there's a lot of opportunities in the next year for Donald Trump to become a loser in courts and at the polls and in the court of public opinion. And that moment in yeah. which he's decisively declared a loser is the moment we've got to worry about the potential for public safety concerns. You know, it's, it's a really good point that Miles brings up, Harry, because, you know, Donald Trump has gotten away with saying a lot of threatening things about the prosecutors. And I'm wondering at what point do they say, you know what, you can't do that anymore? What, at what point do they actually shut him down? Because, you know, being threatening and sort of talking like a mob boss about Jack Smith at all, that's part of his campaign. At some point, do you think that they say enough? It's the court that says that. So the court, once he is right now, there's, you know, the Jack Smith will not issue a proclamation enough. And it is really interesting. It's a perfect juxtaposition because his campaign platform seems to be in that that Smith is deranged and to, and to be going at this. But once a court has jurisdiction and especially a court in D.C. that is used to this, they can say, look, Run your campaign, but do not pollute the jury pool. Run your campaign, but do not endanger the officers of the court to include Jack Smith. And if you do, I have means to really muzzle you that eventually, you know, there's got to be many warnings before you do this to a former president. But that eventually means you are going in jail until you stop. So there's a series of things that a judge can do and will do. So you can see, right, Donald Trump was not expecting this quick of a move. He was not expecting these sorts of heavy, basically for his age and for the amount of crimes, life sentence charges, and he wasn't considering how detailed it all was. He really wasn't ready for this. Like he was blindsided by the Alvin Bragg case, but he was right in a sense that it's a relatively minor series of charges. He wasn't blindsided by the severity. Here, he's blindsided by both the move and the severity. But it's also that point there that as of right now, with regard to J6, no one else has been charged. No one else has gotten a target letter, or at least not, not, not any that have been disclosed. But they will and they can be. And it likely is the case that there will be multiple people. And if and when they're charged, that's a brilliant move by Jack. Not only is it about getting justice, of course, but it's also about setting up a scenario where every person that gets a letter is seen as a flippable target. People have already flipped on Trump. We know that some people have, but people that are actually facing a concrete indictment are far more likely to flip and do so with desperation to sell Donald Trump down the river. Trump wasn't expecting this level of brilliance from Jack, but I think we were.